Impulsing, a new model for common ground. Hi, I'm Denise, an independent theorist in neuroscience. And this talk is about a simplified way of understanding how the nervous system works that we can use in everyday life. It's like the food pyramid gives us a simplified way of understanding our nutrition that we use in everyday life to keep our nutrition balanced. With the impulsing model, we have a way to help keep the tension patterns we call our feelings balanced. At this simplified level, the systems making up our body function the same. For example, our respiratory systems function the same, as does our metabolism and the nervous system. And having this understanding gives us common ground. It's a place we can relate to each other. And it could be what we need to help each other in the world today. Now, since the nervous system is responsible for all conscious experiences, including the tension patterns we call our feelings, and since we often equate our feelings to our quality of life, when we understand how we work at this level, we can make changes in order to restore and maintain balanced feelings. This model is made up of simplified concepts. Consciousness is seen as a series of separate conscious instants that blur together like frames of film. The nervous system structure is simplified as being made up of groups of specialized neurons with branches that reach other groups, forming a circuitry in the body of diverging and converging pathways. Activity on this backdrop, impulse activity, is also simplified. The model proposes that activity in the circuitry starts when the system's embedded sensory groups, which are always monitoring conditions in the body and the environment, absorb a form of energy they're exposed to, such as light or sound waves or tension or temperature. This changes the group's character and energizes the pattern of the sensory group's neurons. This pattern of energized neurons then instantly translates the absorbed energy into another form, the electrochemical energy we call impulses. So in this way, neuron groups start speaking the same language using impulses. So as they're monitoring energy and changing their character, the sensory groups express their updated state as a pattern of impulses to the next group and the next in circuitry. And they form a lightning-like series of energized neuron groups. This is an impulse trail or impulsing. Now deeper in the circuitry, when incoming trails converge on the same group, they yes. often energize the same or similar pattern of neurons in that group. So the pattern of neurons they share is a resolution. It defines what the incoming trails have in common. Then since the energy in these incoming trails also converges on that pattern, the accumulated energy reinforces the trail and propels it onward. And as resolutions are formed from group to group, a dominant trail is carved out. So in this way, the absorption and convergence of energy maintains propulsion in the circuitry. And with this activity in mind, we can infer that the primary work of the system is to monitor and resolve. Impulsing in the nervous system can be compared to electricity in a radio. As electricity energizes different components of a radio, it does specific work in each to form a stream of sound. In the nervous system, we'll propose that impulsing does familiar work in four areas neuroscientists associate with four kinds of conscious work to form a stream of consciousness. Simplified, we'll use impulsing to show in area one how we experience a sensation, area two, how we make a record of each conscious instant into a network of records, area three, how we derive thought, and area four, how we generate the tension patterns we call our feelings. In area one then, the model proposes that when a dominant trail enters the thalamus, a set of groups near the center of the brain, it splits to energize a set of groups in the thalamus that represent qualities making up a conscious instant. So the model proposes that each trail entering the thalamus puts a single instant of consciousness into our conscious stream. Then in area two, the trail from the thalamus fans out to reach the separate areas or patches of the cortex. The cortex is a thin layering of neurons covering the brain surface. And connections from the thalamus reach to areas that are also correspond to the separate qualities of a conscious instant. 
Here the impulses spread over the surface, and when they collide, in effect the qualities are rejoined. And the neurons involved, back to the impulse's points of entry, fuse together, forming a permanent record of the conscious instant just experienced. So this new record fits into the present network of records made in the past by way of the qualities they share. Then as a trail's leftover energy sinks into its network of related records, we experience a sense of recognition. And when it goes on to energize an area of the network, further, we experience a sense of orientation. Then in area three, when two or more incoming trails make records and energize their related networking, the energized areas often overlap. They overlap on a pattern they have in common. The pattern that defines what they share is a resolution. So for example, if we energize the related networks of the words sky and the word orange, the overlap pattern of these energized areas may well converge on a pattern they share. In this case, when the converging energy propels a trail to the thalamus, we may experience a thought of a sunset that enters our conscious stream. In area four, we see how monitoring and resolving activity generates the tension patterns, the feelings we equate with our quality of life. In this case, another energized network, the muscle network, comes into play. It's made of records that match each muscle's range of tension to the tone that muscle expresses at that level. In this way, there's a vast amount of networking relating tension to tones. Now when the muscle network is energized, along with the networking of a current sensation or thought, the energized networks overlap on a pattern of tones they have in common. And this generates a corresponding tension pattern to our muscle landscape. It's a physical reflection of the current sensation or thought. As an example, when you put your finger about an inch from your cheek and make a circle, it feels different than if you make an X. These tension patterns are why we don't bump into each other or bump into walls. Then when a sensation or thought is no longer present, such as when a sensation changes or a thought is used to derive a new resolution, the reversal of tension in the body is experienced. It's experienced as a kind of balance, a balanced feeling. So fluid monitoring and resolving activity maintains balanced feelings. But when a sensation or thought continues, the stronger sustained tension pattern gets our attention. It's experienced as a need. It needs to be released. If it isn't, it may lead to experiencing a stronger need or even emotional pain. Now in terms of everyday life, from infancy in response to person, we may release a need a state to its release. So during our lifetime, we develop a personal pattern of activities, a lifestyle, to meet the needs we're facing. And a healthy lifestyle is a personal pattern of activities that leaves ongoing balanced feelings, which is what we equate with a general sense of well-being, feeling emotionally healthy. In fact, the feelings we consciously experience as emotional balance as reflects the presence of healthy monitoring and resolving activity in the system. So over time, even starting at a simplified level, as we build, we can put into practice in everyday life while supporting the same in others and supporting the integrity of the environment we share. Well, if you'd like to continue, information's at impulsing.net. This has been Impulsing, a new model for common ground. Thank you.